start part four. And I'll begin with showing you the middle deck that has been glued in place, and then I'll start building up from there. After I brushed underneath where these uh, cross members are, this framing, with wood glue, and I had everything positioned and just how I wanted it, I did take and where this seam is, it joins the, the, the main deck with this outer part so the puzzle pieces will come out. I did put a little super glue in that uh, meeting line. And now that this outer edge and the inner platform are glued in place and it's sat overnight, I can take out these puzzle pieces. And I have mentioned in the past, I will probably leave these off. The good news is this piece I did get in, I was able to push it this way and push it that way, get it glued on the beams, and these do fit in nice and snug. I'm going to begin work in the area of slide number 85, and it's a lot of this framing that will hold the upper deck in place. And you can see there's cross members here and there's rubber bands. And there's a special note up here on slide number 86 that advises you not to bind this too tight with these rubber bands, that it's acceptable if there is a small gap where this cross member rests on this little notch. So that is acceptable. But let me start getting these out, make sure I have them all stained. I will pre-stain these and get them in position. These two pages have a lot going on because not only are you putting all these cross supports in, there's also uh, down timbers that support and you're putting in, I believe, up to 12, maybe 13 lamps, which are represented by the red dots. In my preoccupation for drilling the little holes for the hooks that hold the lanterns, I pre-drilled this, put it in place, pre-drilled this, put it in place, but I forgot the supports down below. So I had to pop it back out. It wasn't dry yet, so not a major problem. So the hint is, if you see little square holes all along the way, there are supports that go underneath those. Just to be aware. I'm working on getting all the lanterns in place and I'm working from the front of the ship. This is the front, working back this way. I wish when I drilled the holes for the hooks, I would have drilled an extra hole for the wires because I want them to be on the back side so they're out of sight. This is one of those little micro drill bits and uh, this is my third one. I break these all the time. Once I get that hole through there, I end up putting on magnifying glasses with a little headlamp. And now I can see to feed those wires through that little tiny hole. So let me reposition this. I've turned the ship around so you can get an idea how I do this. There's the hook. I pull this through and I leave just a little. That's about, I don't know, half inch or so. And then I've been looping around the back of the hook. Go all the way around and then come back through and go through where the hook is. And then that leaves me a little wire that actually hangs down. I have the middle deck lighting in place and uh, this being the front of the ship they're behind the rafters on this part of the ship until this point and then they're just the opposite now they're on this side of the rafters. That was my personal choice it kind of looked that way in the instructions, but it doesn't specifically say. My next challenge is going to be all of these tiny little wires and getting them organized. I'm very thankful that they are color-coded, uh, with the brown being the positive, the black being the negative. 
what I'm thinking of doing is drill an additional hole coming this direction along the edge here towards the top and feeding them all through to a center, center point and then this is a very small black straw I could drill a hole at an angle and kind of tuck them in and get them below the ship. Now they recommend you know just cutting a notch and, and running them down but I think uh, using some conduit of my own invention I could run them all down through there and I think they will all fit. So I'll give that a try and let you know how it turns out. I've been able to organize and sort the wires coming from the lights. You can see they'll go behind the framing and I drilled holes in these back towards the beginning of the run. I was able to use one of the micro drill bits and then as I approached where more and more wires were joining I switched to a 1 inch drill bit and that was able to accommodate all the wires. It got a little tight here towards the end. I worked from two directions from the front of the ship to this point and from the rear of the ship to the same point and I chose this as my intersecting point to take the wires below deck because down here in this chamber I have plenty of room to work and put the resistors in place. I've also separated the wires by color, the brown being the positive, the black is the negative. You want to put the resistor on the, uh, the brown wire, that's the positive. And that straw idea that I talked about, they do all fit inside that straw. So I'll be able to uh, drill a hole through the deck here and run that down at an angle and get that all down below deck. Drill the holes have the straw in place that'll help protect those wires. I'll strip these off and get them all connected to the resistors and then a cord similar to what I did back here. Be a little thicker so I can tie these all together. I have the resistors in place and I've gone ahead and connected the two decks temporarily together and this is my first power test. So I've hooked the negative side up to the negative side of the battery and now I'm going to try and slip the positive side in. Just have that clamp hold it. Hopefully. There we go. And all the lights on the top deck are working. And let's take a peek at the lower deck. They're going to be harder to see. They are also working. Now again, that's just off that small little puck battery. The two resistors are just inside here. I just put those on to give extra protection to the connection. I did solder the wires to the leads on the resistors. Browns come out of the ship to the two resistor leads and then the other two leads go to the red wire which goes to the positive power source and the black wires just all go to the negative. I want to recap one little item. Someone had written and asked a question and I wasn't home at the time and they were asking about the stain that I'm using. In the response I said it was dark mahogany. The label actually says it's semi-transparent red mahogany and the product number on it is 255 again made by Minwax and it has a real deep rich maroon color when you put it on the black walnut to the point that it does have a black appearance and that's my artistic interpretation of the black pearl and how I'm building this ship is that it is uh, not when it's in its later stages this would be early on before the curse has really taken effect so I want it to be in pretty good shape I will make the exterior and all the appointments this dark red mahogany but the the deck of the ship that's what I'm using the uh, tongue oil on so it's a natural colorization of the deck and the reason I chose to do that 
is I want to be able to highlight the cannons and a lot of the extras because I will stain those the real deep red mahogany. In the past I've done all the decks in the same color and I notice it kind of blends away the cannons and the rope work. So that was my artistic decision to make. We've got a few more things to do on this layer and I have a lot of supplies ready to go on this deck. I've got like three trays of this kind of materials. But I think what I'll do is I'll end segment four here. I think that's a good summary of the electrical setup. Lights are all working. I'm pleased with that. And as always, thanks for watching.